All right, this is a dirty looking problem. This is called a logistic function. Logistic, L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C. And these are used when you have a, um, a maximum number of what you're looking at that can't go above that ma maximum number. All right, so this is more of a growth function than a decay function, but the way it's worded, we have to use the logistic function. And I'll explain why. So I'm gonna read you the problem. Logistic function. Okay, in a town whose population is 4,000, a disease creates an epidemic, sound familiar? The number of people in infected T days after the disease has begun is given by this function. N of T, that is the number of people infected as a function of time, is the original 4,000 people divided by 1 plus 23.6 e to the negative 0 0.8 t, which is pretty, pretty ugly. Now there's an assumption that no mo nobody is moving into or out of the town. Nobody's about to have a baby, okay? So the population is 4,000 and will stay that way for the period of the epidemic. Um, OK, so what we have to do is figure out how many people are infected initially at T equals zero. Um, and round to the whole uh, nearest whole number. That's the way it is for all of them, all of the questions. Then find how many people are infected day two, day five, day eight, day 12, and day 16. All of which is pretty easy because T is the number of days. So all we're going to have to do is figure out, uh, uh, is, is put in different numbers for T. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that with our trusty calculator. So I was going to explain why, why we have to use a logistic function, and it is that since the most people that can be infected is 4,000, because that's the population of the town. So when there's an upper limit, we have to use logistic functions. Now you won't you won't ever have to do that. Maybe. But it's interesting anyway. OK, I am going to. Take this. And put it in the calculator and then and then make it big. OK, so 4000. divided by, now see how I have a bunch of nasty looking stuff in there. I have to put it in parentheses. Parentheses, one plus 23.6, second, second LN, that gives me e to a power, and the power is negative 0.8, I have to use X instead of T. Oh, that's it. Okay, I hit the right arrow key and I close my parentheses. Really? Hmm. Okay, so there we are, 4,000 divided by 1 plus 23.6 e to the negative, they say 0 0.8, I just said 0.8x, 
and we're using X instead of T. No big deal. All right, now, the first question A is, how many people are initially infected with the disease? Initially means in the beginning. T equals zero is how math people say in the beginning. So the first thing we're going to do is substitute X, um, uh, substitute zero for X. Then to find the people on the subsequent days, we're going to substitute two for X and then five and then eight and then 12 and then 16 and make the calculator do all the work which I think is a wonderful thing. So here we go. Enter. All right, now I'm gonna use my favorite shortcut here. Second, enter, which gives me this back. So now all I have to do is hit the backup key, the left arrow key. Ah, Barbara, you didn't put the zero in. Oh well. So we're going to put the zero in. Here's going to be the answer to A. No. That's times zero. There we go. And I will get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go back up here. Oh, I can't go back up there. All right, well, let's just do it from scratch. 4,000 divided by parentheses 1 plus 23.2 Second LN negative point eight times zero and then right arrow key and then right parent. And now let's make that big. Now we're on the right track. So we're going to have to hit enter. Okay. So 163 actually ought to be the answer. Now, 4,000. Ah, so uh, now we're going to do two days, five days, 10 days, 12 days, and 16, I think. Two, five, eight, 12, and 16. Okay, I'll have to check back on that. Now, second Enter. Back up, back up, back up. Now my cursor is blinking over the zero. I need to calculate this answer for two days. So I type in a two. And then I go back to the outside of my parens and hit enter. So look how much it's jumped from the very beginning to the second day, look how many more people have been infected. Now, second, enter. I use the left arrow key to back up. This is going to be five. And I hit enter. After five days, 2,792, almost 3,000 people by the, the fifth day, the fifth day. All right, second, enter. Now we're going to do eight days. I back up, type an eight, and then come back out. I probably don't need to come back out, but I just feel better doing it. Enter. Now we've got almost 4,000 people, and that is how many people there are in the town. 
OK. Now I'm worried. Well, if I was working for public health, whoa. I would be really worried. OK, I back up, back up, back up. Now I'm going to put, see, I put in eight. Oh, doggone it. 12 and 16, OK. All right, that eight is going to become a 12. All I have to do is overwrite it. And then enter. Oh my goodness. And then 16. Second. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, enter. I'm really getting nervous now. Almost everybody in the town. It rounds up to 4,000, but it's not quite 4,000. But that's after 16 days. That is a terrible disease. Everybody must be sneezing on everybody else. They're under quarantine. That's why the population is not changing. At least nobody has died because we've still got 4,000. Okay, now what I am going to do I am going to take all of these answers and write them, copy them to the next page. I'm going to move it up a little bit. There. OK. And now I want to write, this is A. And all of these are B. This is B. Two days. This is B five days, and this is B, eight days. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the others over. Where did it go? Oh dear. Okay, all right, no problem. There, that's what I want. Okay, now we're gonna come down. We have eight days. Now we're gonna get 12 and 16.
Okay, this is 12 days B. All of these are in question B. Okay, so we're being told to round to the nearest whole number. In the beginning, 163 people are infected. After two days, 694, because the eight rounds the three up to a four up here, the six rounds the two up to a three. So after two days, 694 people. After five days, this eight is going to round the two up to a three. So 2793. And after eight days, yeah, that zero is not going to round up the nine. So 3,849. Now after 12 days, 3,990, the six will round the three up to a four. And doggone it, after 16 days, all 4,000 people have caught it. Almost. Ma a mathematician would look at this and say, no, wait, stop. Not quite 4,000. It'll never actually equal 4,000. If we were to go one day more, let's go one, let's go to 20 days. It doesn't ask us to, but I just want to show you. Okay, so I'm going to do second enter one more time and back up, and I'm going to put 20 in for 16. See, it will never go above 4,000 because 4,000 is as big as it gets and it will never actually equal 4,000. It will always be just a little sliver below 4,000, even though in real life, clearly that's 4,000 people. So let's look at why which is part C. Part C, using this model, can you say whether all 4,000 people will ever be infected? Explain, select the correct choice, there's a choice below, yeah. Well, in real life, yes, all 4,000 will be, but let's look at not in real life. So we're going to look at this right here, and I am going to copy it and put it down near the bottom so I can see it. Well, that's all right. Excuse me. All right, here's C. We're going to analyze this the way a mathematician would. Suppose T goes for many years, like, I don't know, how many days could there be? long-running epidemic. 
let's say that T goes for a million days. Now, that's not realistic, of course. <coughs> but, but we're looking at this theoretically as T goes to infinity. And the way you write this is T as T goes to infinity, what does the number infected do? Well, we're going to look at this. What 4,000, all right, N of T, 4,000 over 1 plus 23.6. Now, e to the negative 0.8t is really 1 over e to the positive 0.8t. Now, as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 0.8 times t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and e to that power gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But we have one being divided by a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So one being divided by a number getting bigger and bigger and bigger means the whole fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. For instance, what if I have 1 divided by 2, and then 1 divided by 5, and then 1 divided, divided by 10, and then 1 divided by 20? Let's check those out. Okay, here we go. 1 divided, not times. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. 1 divided by 5. And then 10 and then 20. 1 divided by 5. Look, it's already getting smaller. As the number on the bottom gets bigger, 1 doesn't change. So the overall fraction is getting smaller and smaller. 0 0.1. 0 0.05. I mean, these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller to the point that they're teeny. smaller and smaller. Okay, someone is bound to think that this is related to the problem, and it's not. Okay, so this fraction, as t goes to infinity, um, there, one, one over e to the point 8t gets really, really close to zero. So what you're going to be left with Yeah, it's really true. We're going to have this, not exactly that, but really, really close to that. So that this is going to be zero. So that, yeah. 
you'll have 4,000 over one. Now that's after the epidemic goes for billions of years, billions of days. Actually, no, probably just a little over 16 days. Yeah, all 4,000 people are going to be infected. But you have to imagine this because it's not the same. I've done this problem three times with different numbers. And for some of the problems, it says, no, the whole the whole population doesn't equal. 4000. And in some of them, it does. In this one, it does. Actually, this will never actually be zero, so it will always be one point something, which means that won't be exactly 4,000. So it's probably right to say, I mean, it could be like 0 0.00000002. So that the numbers will keep getting like this, really close to 4,000. And in real life, it would be 4,000, but mathematics is not real life. So no, it's not actually gonna equal 4,000, but in real life, people sick, it will be the whole population. That's what mathematicians and statisticians sit around doing. That's why when you're a business leader, you want to have them working for you. So they can do it and you don't have to. Now, have you ever thought about being an electrician? You could have fun with electricians. This is a multiple choice problem, and these are your multiple choices. And we're going to go through the steps that you follow in order to get one of these answers, and you can see which one is correct here. So how do you end up with that answer? Oh my goodness enough to give you a headache, or at least to need another cup of coffee. Actually, I keep ibuprofen by my computer, because <laughs> I know that math can cause headaches. Okay, here we go. I equals V over R. That's voltage over resistance. You don't have to know that. They don't even bother to explain it to you. Times one minus E to the negative R over L times T. I do know R is resistance, but I forget what I and L are. T is gonna be time, probably. OK, now I have to solve for T. So uh, there are going to be a number of steps I have to follow before we can get E to that. Um, all by itself. So we have to be patient here. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to multiply both sides of this equation. So let me have more room here. I equals V over R times one minus E to the negative R over L times T close brackets. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to multiply both sides of the equation by R over V so that the R's will cancel and the V's will cancel. I have to do it over here before I forget. 
um, R over V. All right. Now, these have canceled out. So on the right, I just have one minus E to the negative R over L times T up in the exponent. Over here, R over V times I is really R over V times I over one. So you multiply the R and the I together, you multiply the V and the one together, that's a one. And what you end up with is I times R, because when we have multiple letters, we usually put them in alphabetical order, over V equals one times negative E to the negative R over L to the T. Okay. Now this is all very one step at a time. Remember, I have to get this by itself. This is the term where T is, and I have to um, um, solve for T. So here, this negative in front of there is negative one, just so you know. Now, this one is not doing anything, so I'm going to subtract it from both sides of the equation. I'm going to subtract this one, and this, I'm going to subtract it from here also. So one minus one is zero over here, and I am left with, I R over V minus one equals negative one times E to the negative R over L times T. Well, um, I have a couple of choices here on what I could do, but noticed that their answer has one minus I R over V. Here I've got I R over V minus one. So if I want to get my answer in one of their forms, and notice this, all four of the answers have one minus I R over V. So I don't have any choice here. I am going to have to divide both sides of this equation by negative one. Or let's face it, negative one times negative one is positive one. I could, and this will be a lot easier, multiply this negative one by negative one and multiply well actually what i'm doing here is i'm multiplying the whole side by negative one multiply this side by negative one and now negative one times negative one is positive one so these guys cancel each other out and over here i'm left with e to the negative R over L, no, 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 wrong color. E to the negative R over L times T. Over here, I'm going to distribute the negative one. I didn't have to distribute the negative one here because this is all one term. Um, so I will have negative I 
R over V, negative one times negative one is positive one. So that's what I've got in this step. Well, negative IR over V plus one is the same thing as plus one minus IR over V, which is what I need to get the answer in the form that they want. Okay, equals E to the negative R over L times T. All right, we're almost there. I have to take the LN of both sides to get that T down. So I'll put parentheses around both sides of the equation and take the LN of both sides. Because the LN is the, um, um, the word escaped me. The inverse function of E, ln of x, if I have f of x equals ln of x, then the inverse function is e to the x. They are inverses of each other. So that's why this works. Okay, so I am going to have the ln. Aha, there's the ln. I've got almost this whole thing ready now. The ln. Black. The ln. They put brackets, don't they? OK. Well, not yet they don't, though. 1 minus IR over V equals negative RL, negative R over L, times T times the ln of E, which is what? One, yes. And negative RL times T um, uh, times one is negative RL, R over L times T. Okay, one more step. I'm going to move over the equal sign. I have to get T by itself. So I am going to multiply, multiply by negative L over R. on both sides. Now they're putting a bracket. OK. Now, what does this do? I'm going to take an extra step and write this in a more understandable way. This is negative L over R times negative R over L times T. So that the negatives, negative times negative is positive. The L's cancel, the R's cancel, and all I'm left with is T equals, and over here I have negative 
R over L bracket LN of one minus I R over V. And that is exactly their answer. T equals negative L over R bracket LN of one minus I R over V close parentheses, close bracket. Is that a little stinker? That is a little stinker problem right there. Yes, okay. I assume we all agree. All right, now, something that's used in uh, CSI, crime scene investigation. They don't have any crime scene investigation problems in my math lab, but they do in the book right here. When was the murder committed? That's what Newton's law of cooling does. Okay. So according to Newton's law of cooling, if a body with temperature T1 is placed in surroundings with temperature T sub zero, T naught, different from that of T1, <clears throat> the body will either cool or warm to temperature T of T after T minutes. <coughs> and here's the formula. T of T, that is the final temperature, equals the surrounding temperature, the temperature of the environment surrounding whatever we're talking about. And this is T1 is the temperature of the specific thing. So let's see what this story is. A metal pan with temperature 160. OK, that's what T1 is. Is placed in a freezer with temperature 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's the air, the air and the environment surrounding the metal pan that's 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, after 15 minutes, little t, little t is the time, the temperature of the pan is 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that's what the final temperature is after um, 15 minutes. So we would say t of 15. Use Newton's law of cooling to find the pan's temperature after 20 minutes. That is T of 20, capital T of 20, the final temperature after 20 minutes. Now, all of this looks like a lot of gobbledygook, but all you have to do is stop and think what is the individual body? Well, here it's not a body body. It's a metal pan and its temperature is T1. All of the other temperatures, that is the T naught and the T naught, so it occurs twice. They're the surrounding temperature. Okay, now, so we're ready to go, except we have no idea what K is, we can't solve a temperature until we know what K is. And furthermore, it doesn't tell us how many places to round to. So we did a problem like this 
Um, yesterday? No. Thursday. So we're going to do it again. One in which we we can't. Well, you'll see. We just don't know how many places to round K to until the very, very end. All right, so here we go. T of T, in this case, T, uh, uh, well, T of 50, because that's what we're given first. The final temperature after 15 minutes, so you're taking a measurement then, is T naught, which is zero. I like to label them as I go along. Zero, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Plus T1 minus T naught. Now T1 is 160, so 160 minus zero times E to the negative K little t. That's going to be minutes. T is minutes. Little t is minutes. Well, this is going to be t of 15. Oops, we do know what that is. T is 15 minutes. Because it says so. After 15 minutes, the temperature of the pan is 47 degrees. It was 160. They put it in the freezer for 15 minutes, and, and when they check the temperature, it's 47 degrees. So that's after 15 minutes right here. T will always be T, that, that number. Okay, so 0 plus 160 minus 0 is going to be 0 plus 160. Um, so what we're going to have 160 e to the negative k times 15. Now big T of 15, capital T of 15 is 47. So we will have 47 equals 160 times e to the negative, let's say 15k. Now it looks more normal. Now this, this problem from this point on is exactly like the problems we solved on Thursday. Divide by the number in front of e, but don't use your calculator. So we'll have 47 over 160 equals e to the negative 15 k. And then since you have an equation with e in it, we take the ln of both sides. Getting all excited. Okay. So the ln of 47 divided by 160 equals negative 15k times the ln of E, which is one. one. It's the most exciting part of the problem. Negative 15k times one is negative 15k. So to get k by itself, I divide by negative one, five. Negative one, five, negative 15 on both sides. So the negatives cancel, the 15s cancel, and I am left with what k is, which is the ln of 47 over 160 over negative 15. Now, 
since we were not told how many places to round to, we can't do it. It's enough to say to ourselves we know what K is, and we will put that in at the very end. That way we're sure to get the right answer. Knock on wood. Okay. But now that we know what K is, we can do this last part of the problem. T of 20, well first, first what we need to do is we need to write our formula. Well, actually though, if we write the specific formula, it's going to be 160 e to the negative k t. Okay, we know what k is now, so we're just going to find t. What is the temperature after 20 minutes? This says the temperature after 20 minutes. All right, now. T of 20, or T at 20, is 160 E to the negative K, and we know what K is, so that's going to be negative the LN of 47 over 60 over negative 15. Aha, so negative times negative is going to be positive. Oops, times T, which is 20. So the temperature after 20 minutes is going to be 160 times E to the LN of 47 over 160. That would have been terrible. Times 20 over 15. Yep, it's the negative 15. Okay, so here we go. One sixty second LN. Okay, now this is going to be the LN. Yeah. Okay, now this looks hard, but we have to go really slowly. The LN of 47 divided by six, 160, close parentheses, times 20, divided by 15. Okay, 31.24, and we're supposed to round to the nearest degree. Let's see if that's right. 32. Gee, they're wrong. There's no way that two would round up to a three, to a one. So let's see, let's see if we go back here and we actually work out a decimal, 
Ellen. Forty seven over one sixty. Close parentheses, divide by negative fifteen. Suppose they had rounded to point zero eight or point zero eight two, even better. Then Let's put 0 0.082 there and see. Is that what I said? Yeah, 0 0.082. times 20 divided by 15. Now we're going to put that in the calculator. And all right, so we're going to have 160 second LN negative 0 0.082 times 20 minutes divided by 15. No. So I will send the publisher a little note that's not actually too nice. Okay. What if we use the whole long decimal? that. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's do the next one. OK, here's the intro about Newton's law of cooling. A chilled jello salad with temperature 41 degrees Fahrenheit is taken from a refrigerator and placed in a 68 degree room. OK, so if you can imagine a little dish. And there are the globs of jello. That's not really the way jello looks, but pretend. OK, and its temperature is 41 degrees. And it's in a room. That is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, after 15 minutes, the salad goes from 41 to 49 degrees. They're using capital T for temp here. So 41 goes from the original 41 to 49. That's how we find our K. And now we're going to have fun with this again. T, capital T of little t, equals T naught plus T1 minus T naught e to the negative kt. So the first set of data we're given is T of 15, again, 
Now, the surrounding temperature is what T naught is, and that's 68 degrees. The specific temperature of the body, here the body is jello, and that's 41. That's what T1 is. So we're going to have 68 plus 41 minus 68 times e to the negative k times 15. And t of 15, we're told, is 49. So the little guy is warming up. 49 equals 68 plus um, 8 minus 1 is 7, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So that's going to be negative 27 times e to the negative 15 k. So we'll have 49 equals 68 minus 27 e to the negative 15 k. All right, the goal is to get this by itself. So the first thing I do is I subtract 68 from both sides. Leaving me on the right with 68 minus 68, minus 27 e to the negative 15, K. Now, um, 18 minus 9 and 5 minus 4 is 1, so that should be negative 19. Now let's see if that's right. 9 plus 9 is 18, carry the 1. Carry the 1. Hmm. Now that's 18, so this becomes a 5. Yeah, it's going to be 19, negative. But yeah, the negative's up there. Okay. Now, what does that leave us? That leaves us with negative 19 equals negative 20 e to the negative 15 k. Now divide by negative 27 and divide by negative 27. Over here, the negative 27s cancel. Over here, the negatives cancel. I'm left with 19 over 27. Equals E to the negative 15 K. Okay, now I take the LN of both sides. The ln of 19 over 27 equals negative 15k times the ln of e, which is 1. one. Yep. Okay. So what k is going to equal is negative, well, I divide both sides by negative 15. And that tells me what K is. So K equals the LN of 19 over 27 divided by negative 50. Now, once again, we're going to play this game. Let's find out what that equals. The LN of 19 divided by 27, close parens, divided by negative 15. Enter. 
Okay. Suppose. Suppose I were to go to one, two, three, four, five decimal places. Or suppose I didn't. What if I went to four? Because two would not cause the four to round up to a five. Let's try that. Point zero, two, three, four. Equals K. All right, now I'm trying. We're going to find out what now? Oh, again, they're going to wait to 20 minutes. So T of 20 is going to equal T naught, which is 68, plus Yeah, the original temperature, uh, which is 41. What did we put there? 41, yeah. 41, well actually, yeah, again, we don't have to do this from scratch because we have this right here. So this is going to be 68 minus 27E to the negative, because that negative sign is already there, 0 0.0234, and let me check and make sure that's right, 0 0.0234 times 20. Okay, now don't be tempted to say 68 minus 27. This 27 is stuck onto the E. Okay. So here we go. Sixty-eight minus twenty-seven second ln hmm, negative point zero two three four times twenty. Enter. Let's see. 51. Because the zero won't cause the one to round up. That is a nice thing. So 51. Actually, it's 51.09. We could even say 50, 51.1, which would round. Which would round to 51. So no problem. So there we are, Newton's law of cooling. Now we don't have time to do this, but I'll work it out. I'll work it out anyway and include it in the video too, but I know that uh, Ms. Mora needs to get to work, right? Not today, Not today. I have to go to the next, next class. class I'll stay here for five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. But this is a tricky problem. Okay. Okay. So just so you know, there's an extra step. Okay. So the anyway, anybody who wants to go can go. 
and I'm just going to include this in the video. The police discovered the body of a murder victim. Whoa! Critical to solving the crime is determining when the murder was committed. The coroner arrives at the murder scene at 12 p.m. That's noon. She immediately takes the temperature of the body and finds it to be 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the first part of the problem. OK. Um, in the beginning. Initially at T equals zero. T equals zero is noon. OK, so at T equals zero. The temperature capital T. At time zero in the beginning is ninety four. Point six degrees. She comes back in one hour. She then takes the temperature one hour later. That'll be T. T of one. One hour later, the temperature is ninety three. 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use this to find K. Once we have K, we are going to do the last sentence, which is the temperature of the room is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's capital T naught. That's the ambient environmental temperature. T naught, capital T naught, you got too many T's in this formula, is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I keep picturing this out in the forest, and it's not. They find the body in a room that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and George has just come in. Hello, George. No, Aww. you can't. You can't get up there. There's Georgie. There's Georgie. OK. No, you can't get on my desk. You can't get on my desk. Just make yourself at home. OK, so here we go. Here we begin. The first thing we're going to do is work with these two temperatures to find K. Yeah, all right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry. All right, so T of T, big T of little t, equals T naught, the environmental temperature, plus the temperature of the body, minus, um, yeah, minus the temperature of the environment, times e to the negative k t. Now in the beginning, of course, we don't know. So all we can say is that at the beginning of time here, this is what we had. All right, so we say 94.6 minus 70. That's going to be 24.6, right? So our formula for in the beginning is 70 plus 24.6 times e to the negative k t. Now, the coroner comes back in exactly one hour. Okay. 
OK. So, and at that time, the temperature is 93.4. Okay, so step one in clearing away everything so that, that we can isolate e to the negative k and then take the ln. I have to subtract 70 from both sides. Peel the onion. Seventy minus seventy is zero on the right, so I have twenty-four point six times e to the negative k over here. We're going to say 93.4 minus 70, bring down the 4, or 4 minus 0 is 4, 3 minus 0 is 3, 9 minus 7 is 2. So we have 23.4 equals 24.6 times e to the negative k. The next thing I do is I divide out the number in front of E. 24 times 6, divide both sides by 24.6. Do not go to your calculator. So 23.4 over 24.6 equals E to the negative K. And we take the ln of both sides. And so we will bring down the negative K and then do our magic with the ln of E, which is one. 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 Yes, yes. You, you are my one person. Your job is to say one. OK, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to divide both sides or multiply both sides much better. Let's multiply both sides by negative one so that we can get K by itself and not have that negative in front. So that will be the ln of 23.4 over 24.6. I have offended George by not petting him. He has left me. All right, now, now I go to my calculator and I Say negative ln 23.4 divided by 24.6. Close parentheses. Negative ln of 23.4 divided by 24.6. Enter. And so I haven't got really a whole lot of choice except to go with 0 0.05 because 0 0.050010, I mean, it's never gonna round up until the, so I'm gonna go with point, <coughs> I'm going to live dangerously and go with 0 0.05. There not being a whole lot of choice. Notice it's positive, not negative, even though the negative was in front. These things happen. Actually, the truth is that when you have a number less than one in here, greater than zero, but less than one, the ln is negative. 
So you're going to have a negative times the negative, and that's why it's positive. All right, so we're going to let K equal positive 0, 0.05. Positive 0 0.05. That's what it was, right? 0 0.05, yes. All right, so now we go up here. And... We now have to figure out when the person died. So here's our formula. Final temperature. Miss Barbara, I'm going to head out. I'll finish the video later today, OK? OK, great. Final temperature equals No, that's the environment. I've got to do it over again now. Okay, T1 minus T0 e to the negative 0 0.05 because the negative is already there times T, and we're going to be solving for T. Okay, now we're living in a new universe. We know that the average human temperature, average, average human temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we assume that this person started out at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and then he got murdered or she or whoever. And when the coroner arrives, she doesn't know how long the body's been dead, but she takes the temperature and it's 94.6. This now is the final temperature and this is the beginning temperature. So 94.6 equals 70 plus parentheses 98.6 minus 70 parentheses E, that is close parentheses, times E to the negative 0 0.05 T. So we're going to have 94.6 equals 70 plus uh, 28.6 times e to the negative 0 0.05 t. All right, I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. That will leave me 24.6. Over on the right, 70 minus 70 is 0. 28.6 e to the negative 0.05. T. Now I divide both sides of the equation by 28.6. 28.6. On the right, the 28.6s cancel out. I am left with E to the negative 0.05T over on the right. And on the left, I have 24.6 over 28.6, and I take the ln of both sides, take the ln of both sides. I'll have the ln of 24.6 over 28.6 equals negative 0 0.05 T times the ln of E, which is one. So negative 
0.05 T times one is negative 0.05 T, and therefore T is going to equal, we'll define T, I divide both sides by negative 0.05, which cancels out over on the right, leaving me with T equals this. I will put that in my calculator. Okay, the ln of 24.6 divided by 28.6, close parentheses, divided by negative 0 0.05, enter. And the instructions say round to the nearest whole number. Now this is the number of hours or minutes. I have to find that out. It's three something. Takes it one hour later. Okay, this is gonna be hours. Whew. Okay, she first showed up here at noon. That's when she took this temperature. After the person had started out their day at about that temperature, what our coroner discovered is that three hours before she took the temperature at noon, The body had just ceased to be alive. So three hours before noon is 9 a.m. And there you go. Right, I'll write it down here. Three hours before noon. is 9 a.m. And we are done.